Hello, keyboard people. It's time for the mono K, K or Kai, K Kai, Kai. This is going to be a pretty long in-depth review on this particular keyboard. Let's get right on into it. The K is a 60% uh, available both in HHKB and standard 60% layouts. Uh, the model that I have here is the HHKB variant. It is a screwless gasket mounted HG inspired 60%. And uh, this was run uh, twice so far in uh, 2019 and 2020 from Monoke, uh, also known as Beaming Robot, the Singapore vendor. Now, this thing started at about $430 uh, for the entry level unit and went up to about $900 for the high end steel unit. There were both uh, hot swap and standard solderable PCBs available for this. And uh, it weighs about a kilo unassembled with a uh, adjusted front height of about 20 millimeters. So that's all the important bits. I guess before we get into the review, let's talk about something very important, something that a lot of people don't really understand. Now, as always, my in-depth keyboard reviews are as unbiased as possible and when I state my opinion, which I will, keep in mind my opinion is my opinion. And just because I don't like particular parts of this keyboard, it doesn't mean that they're necessarily bad. So, obviously, opinion and criticism is a big thing in this hobby, since most everything is preference. And, uh, yeah, overall, I think this is a good keyboard, so let's get into it. And here we are. However, we are not going to be starting with the keyboard. We're gonna be starting with something else. Something that I've never really done before because it's never been necessary, but let's go. We are going to start with the unboxing experience. Now, a big part of the, uh, of the K is the unboxing experience. And a lot of people that pay a decent amount for keyboards expect a decent unboxing experience. For me, I don't really care, but we'll run through it. Uh, first of all, we've got a fully custom box with a logo, as well as another logo here printed on the bottom. Very cool. Uh, one fits snugly into the other. And uh, as a matter of fact, the, uh, the shipping box fits pretty much perfectly snug around this, which I like. It means no extra foam, none of that nonsense. Uh, in terms of shipping. So uh, keep in mind, uh, these things are not gonna be in the exact order as yours, for example, because this has been opened up and you know unboxed before. So it slides right out, very nice. Uh, we can see that there is a bit of foam here, decently hard foam on the top piece. The cardboard is decently thick, but you know, it is just cardboard and uh, this layer over it is a layer that's just stuck on there. So that's not printed directly on the cardboard. It's a piece of paper that's essentially stuck to it or cardstock or whatever the material is. Inside, we can see a few interesting things. So right off the bat, we get this little, we get this little card with the Mono K branding. Cool. It's a, it's a map. Maybe it will lead you to some treasure. Who knows? Uh, it's nicely done. It's done in some sort of gold film printing. Very cool. The back is blank. So no treasure on the back. Uh, next up, we've got enjoy your new K. This I appreciate. So I'm, I'm not super big on the unboxing experience, but a little bit of an artistic touch, just print it on a piece of paper is something I do appreciate. There we go, it folds out, you've got the Monokay logo, fold out some more, and you've got the assembly manual. Good thing there's an assembly manual because this thing is has non-standard assembly, to say the least. So this is very nice. It's printed on decently thick paper or cardstock. Uh, it looks like the art 
is unique. This probably was not cheap to do. As a matter of fact, none of this uh, unboxing or packaging was cheap to do. Uh, next up, we've got a customized Ziploc bag with the Monokay logo. A uh, little bit of a sticker here telling you what's in here. So you've got a JST, an O-ring, four Phillips head screws, and one... I assume that's the daughter board, right? Yeah, that's got to be a daughter board. And then inside of this Ziploc bag is another Ziploc bag, which has the little daughter board, JST connector and cable, and four screws. Very cool. And you've got your O-ring in here. Uh, next up would be your plate or your PCB. This actually came properly pack, uh, packaged, I think wrapped in some sort of plastic film. Cool. And then we've got the PCB. And we'll get into the PCB later when we run through the keyboard. And then under it, we've got a nice microfiber cloth that is also branded with the Monoke branding. Uh, I assume when you first open this, this would be more apparent, but I did this myself, so I probably screwed it up. And then you pull back all the tabs and you have your K, finally. And then you can just pull it out. There it is. It's nice. All right, so the case bottom actually allows you to stick your fingers in here and pull it out. Very nice. Uh, same type of hard foam. That specialty cut to fit the keyboard. And then this is all glued together onto a, another decently thick piece of heavy foam. Very nice. Very, very nice. In terms of unboxing experience, this is definitely up there. Now, in terms of my opinion on, you know, packaging and whatnot, uh, I find the microfiber cloth I like, because that's useful. Uh, but, you know, having branded boxes and all that doesn't do it for me. I'm, I don't really care. Uh, I'd rather just get a hard case, you know, that I can reuse. Because realistically, you're not going to transport your, your keyboard around in a box like this. You're not going to walk around with this and take this to the office. So in reality, a box like this is just going to sit in your closet until, you know, it gets destroyed by moisture or silverfish or something. So in my opinion, again, opinion, fancy packaging is just garbage. I mean, by definition, it's cardboard, which it's garbage. So this is a lovely unboxing experience, but it makes me sad to, to, to think that, you know, so much time and effort was spend, uh, spent on this, whereas I could have just gotten something like this. Just a simple hard case, throw the keyboard inside, got a handle, take it to the office, throw it in your car, et cetera, et cetera. So that's the unboxing experience. Uh, for the people that do care about the unboxing experience, I think it's definitely up there. For me, eh, I'd rather save 30 bucks off of the, uh, the price of the kit, personally. Uh, these Ziploc bags, these I like. Anything reusable, I like. Reusability is nice. So Ziploc bags with uh, all the components in them, big thumbs up. Uh, An ESD Ziploc for the uh, PCB, amazing. Uh, the user manual, very nice, but if this came in a hard case, I'd be a hundred times happier. But it is still incredibly, incredibly nice. The amount of attention to detail uh, that has been done by Monoke is spectacular. And we're gonna see that when we run through the entirety of the board. This is a theme that this entire keyboard and everything surrounding it sticks to. Everything is very carefully and aesthetically taken care of. So. Let's get into the actual keyboard. And here we are with the actual keyboard, finally. Now I've got a random set of keycaps on there because uh, I was testing this earlier. Uh, not a very good match for the silver. Uh, now keep in mind, uh, pretty, pretty much every aluminum unit like this has a silver aluminum top. And then for the aluminum bottoms, you had the choice between blue and red. Uh, 
As for the stainless steel bottom, I haven't seen one in person, uh, though I hear they are very nice. Okie dokie. So looking at it from the top, we can see a few things. We can see decent, uh, decent uh, top and bottom bezels to be expected from a gasket mount. And we see incredibly thin side bezels. Now I tried to measure these, but due to how the sides work, I couldn't measure it without scratching up the case. So I avoided doing it. When, when you look at it top down, you can see that essentially everything sticks out. The front seems to stick out, the sides seem to stick out, the back seems to stick out. And this is a design decision that I kind of like. It gives the entire keyboard a nice rounded aesthetic where there's no, there's no hard edges anywhere. I mean, if we look close enough, we're gonna find them, but there's no hard edges anywhere. It's a very soft keyboard. Now, I don't mean soft like, you know, like a sponge. I just mean the edges are all nice and rounded. It's soft on the eyes, which is pretty nice. Now, the sides are inspired by HG sides. So it kind of looks like there's a seam right there, but there isn't. What we're actually looking at is an angle going like that and like that. You can see right there. And then there is the bit that sticks out the farthest, and that gives you basically a simulated seam. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan of the HG sides. I don't know, they, they don't really do anything for me, but a lot of people love it. And I think this keyboard has done it incredibly, incredibly well. Now, as for the uh, front and the back, they kind of seem like they bulge out too. Uh, the back obviously doesn't come, uh, doesn't come straight down at a 90 degree angle comes down a little, little sloped, and that allows you to essentially see the back when you're looking at it top down. Pretty cool. And then the front is kind of a different situation. And this is due to the rounding. Let's take a nice close look. Look how smooth that is. Camera over here. There we go. What are you focusing on? Like, seriously. All right. See that? See that? See that nice little rounded angle right there? Uh, the same goes pretty much everywhere on the case. It is very rounded. As a matter of fact, it looks like just like a tiny little front lip on it, even though there isn't. And that's just from the rounding right there. That pretty much goes all the way around the case. What this does is if you're looking straight down, it makes it seem like this front bit actually sticks out, but it doesn't just because of this curvature right here. I really like the curvature overall. I really like the design aesthetics of the exterior of this case. They're very clean. Most of the edges are rounded, obviously not the you know inside 90 degree angle, but essentially everything else is cleanly rounded and it all plays together into the motif. Even the bottom edges are decently rounded. There's no hard edges anywhere on this, and I think that's kind of cool. Uh, here we've got the red bottom. This is a standard aluminum bottom, so this is basically like an entry level or standard kit instead of the SE or special edition. As you can see, there are no screws. This is screwless. I do this because obviously there are screws that hold it together. You just don't see them. We've got four feet that came pre-assembled and the feet are pretty nice. Actually, let's, let's inspect the feet. It's a nice little foot. Looks like half of a cone basically. Hmm. I've never seen a foot exactly like this. That is an interesting looking foot right there. And it fits perfectly into its little hole right there. It's pretty good. Uh, I've had a positive experience with the feet. I've had some keyboards with, you know, poor foot experience. But this allows me to comfortably move the keyboard around when I want to, 
and it'll also hold it in place when I don't want it to move. So 10 out of 10 feet, very nice feet. Uh, otherwise, we've got the Monike uh, logo right there, and this is engraved. Uh, the depth is not super deep. Let's take a look at it. Uh, where's my finger? There it is. There's that logo. Look at that. Look at that engraving right there. Very cool. Very cool indeed. It, the machining is very cleanly done. Uh, keep in mind, you're seeing this thing way larger than it is in person, and wow, that is spectacularly done. Uh, even the anodization deep within the recesses is super clean. Uh, in terms of anodization as a whole, uh, you can see like some random discoloration on the back. That's just from fingerprints. That's why I'm wearing these gloves. Uh, I have terrible, terrible hands. If you guys watch my Twitch streams, you know that I have terrible, terrible hands. The anodization itself is very good. Very, very good. Now, obviously my hand oils are, you know, making areas like this more shiny than other areas, but there's no graininess. There's no horizontal streaks, no streaks anywhere, no discoloration anywhere. Uh, if I were to never have touched this with my hands, or if I were to clean this a lot more thoroughly, this would be the most uniform red aluminum you've ever seen. Now on my screen, this looks a little bit orange, but it's not. This is uh, this looks like a very standard red. It looks like 187C, the Pantone. Uh, it looks a little orange on camera until I do this. This is the correct color. I guess the reflectivity kind of throws off the color a little bit but it's very, very clean Anno, 100%. Uh, as for the silver, silver Anno is solid. I mean, it's silver. Uh, generally, uh, for silver, what you want to keep an eye, uh, an eye out for is uh, irregularities within the aluminum itself, uh, notably if the aluminum has grain, has issues in it, because silver Anno is just clear anodization. So in a perfect world, you see directly onto the aluminum. Uh, the aluminum chosen for this is spectacular. I don't see any weirdness going on. It's very, very clean. Except for the random dust on it. It is... This is an aesthetically beautiful keyboard. Now that's my opinion. But it is an objectively well-finished and machined keyboard exterior. Uh, one last thing here is we've got a little bit of a recess for the USB-C port. Uh, normally, I get annoyed when the USB port is recessed, whether it be a little bit or a lot. However, I have never struggled to get my connector in the hole. And that is what defines an issue for me. If I can get it in the hole every time, not a problem. And with the K, I've always gotten it in the hole every time. So essentially the daughter board sits here. So you've got a little bit of a cutout and then within the cutout, the port actually sits a little bit, a little bit deeper. If I can get my cameras to focus today, see that? It sits a little bit deeper. It looks like 0.75 or one millimeter away. Probably 0.75. But yeah, uh, I like the cutout. Would I have liked it to be perfectly flush? Sure, but from a uh, machinability perspective, I don't think that would have been possible. So, yeah. All right. All right, let me get the keycaps off of this. Let me open it up.
All righty. All right. It's time for the most important part of any in-depth keyboard review. That is the screw review. Let's take a look at these screws. All right, here are the screws. Now, these may look very large to you because they're on a macro cam. They are really not. They're very, very small. So there are four screws total. Uh, they are Phillips head, which honestly I would prefer if they were something else for you know long-term usability. Uh, but they are rather small. Uh, this is a screw for the Jaguar plate. Look how thick that is. Now, this is a case screw for the K. This is a plate screw, just, just for reference. So a, uh, a different keyboard's uh, case screw would be significantly larger than this. And these are rather small. Uh, is that an issue with this particular keyboard? No, it is not, because it's held together by a variety of forces. Uh, we will be reviewing a keyboard soon where the screws are too small and may be detrimental to the board. Uh, for this one, my only qualm with the screws is their Phillips head. I mean, I assume that's because of the limitation of the size of the screw. You can't really get anything else in there. Uh, maybe like a T2, barely. But yeah, those are the screws. Now these screws, essentially, are screwed in from the top. What do they do? They screw the case top to the case bottom. And if you look very closely, right there, we can see that the case top has a little half of a ledge right there where the screw will hold on. And it screws into the case bottom, which is the red part. Uh, this is actually super easy to identify because of the different uh, materials. So what it does is It'll push the silver bit down and the red part up until eventually they make a semi-flush contact. So that's how the assembly works. Uh, one thing that I have some issues with is just general assembly and disassembly. I find it a little bit complex to assemble and disassemble. Keep in mind, uh, keep in mind my hands are terrible. So uh, you guys probably saw me when I was trying to disassemble it. I couldn't get the screws out because my hands are too shaky. So I got to use pliers or uh, tweezers, pardon. Let's just chalk that up to me having bad hands. Anyway, let's open it up and see what's going on on the inside. There we go. Pull it up. Ah, the JST is not connected. Cool. Very cool. But... Let's uh, get this piece of foam out of the way. So here we can see the mounting mechanics, essentially. So I said earlier that this keyboard is held together by a variety of factors. So one of the factors is obviously screwing the top onto the bottom, but we can see that this basically makes a little hemisphere or half a circle, right? And then the top bit right there also makes half a circle. Those half circles fit together quite nicely to keep the keyboard together very, very well. Uh, in addition to this, you've got this ledge here, which sits here and here. And what that aims to do is obviously keep these corners in place and keep the plate and PCB in place via a gasket separator. All right. So uh, we'll tour the insides before we talk about the mounting. I guess we will start with the case bottom. So case bottom is fairly simple. Like we said, it's screwless. So that means no screws on the outside. The screws are on the inside. Quite cool. We've got these little nubs here and these nubs aim to hold the gasket in place. We've got a little Biso face right there. If you guys are familiar with the Biso, uh, the Biso can be seen on the KFE as well as some other keyboards. 
in terms of the internal machining and finishing, the internal machining and finishing is pretty much spot on. Uh, no issues, no hook marks, no scratches, no discoloration. Uh, you can see a little bit in, of the machining marks, but that's fairly standard for the inside of any case. Uh, we've got our mounting point for a USB-C daughter board, which connects via JST to a full-sized PCB. Here we've got a cable gutter that for some reason loops up. Very cool. And we've got this, which if I can do some math, looks like that's where the space bar goes. Unless I'm insane. Let me double check. Yeah, that looks like the space bar area. I'm not sure why specifically this is here. Uh, maybe if you had a uh, polycarbonate plate with a huge amount of flex, potentially. I'm not sure. I'm really not sure. This is the one thing I'm not sure about. Anyway, daughter board attaches to the case bottom via four little screws. Those come in the little baggy. Daughter board is fantastic. Looks nice. JST connectors are decent. Cable is decent. Uh, one thing I would recommend during assembly is if it's possible to just strip this, uh, this uh, sheath off your cable to go ahead and do it. Uh, this can get really, really annoying during assembly if you are using the, uh, the foam. Now, speaking of the foam, the foam has two sides. You've got the shiny side right here. And you've got this matte side right here. Now, the very astute of you can tell that the hole in the foam is not as big as the hole here. This is what causes an issue. So sometimes you'll have, uh, you'll have a little bit of the cable not go down. And then when you try to assemble the case, it doesn't really fit flush together. Again, the simple solution is just to, to strip off the sheathing if you can. Uh, and if you're not using the foam, you're pretty much good to go. It's not really a problem. Uh, the foam is decently soft uh, in terms of the acoustic differences. So uh, all, of the, uh, all of the acoustics and all of the uh, feel, so the sound and feel, will actually be covered by Paul later on in this video. So uh, generally when I do my in-depth reviews, I will type on a keyboard for an extended period of time to get an idea of all of its quirks, uh, its sound profile, its feel, its issues, all of that. Uh, in this case, my friend Paul typed on it because I'm not that great on a 60%. So uh, he typed on it for about four weeks to break in the switches and then an additional one week after the switches had been uh, uh, modded and lubed. Uh, he also got an opportunity to try it with the foam and without the foam. So that's something we'll discuss later in the video. All right, so that's the case bottom. Let's take a look at the case top. Now, the, the, the mounting of this keyboard is something I have never seen before and a lot of people have never seen before. Thankfully, the, uh, the user guide actually tells you how to, properly, uh, how to properly assemble it because I wouldn't have figured it out without the user manual. So let's pop the plate out of the mount. There we go. And take a look at the case top. Alrighty, so here we have the case top. Now, like we said before, you've got these little hemispheres that screw into the case bottom, and then you've got these full-on circles that also fit into the case bottom. Now that we don't have a plate in there, it'll become way easier to see how this works right there, see? Now, the nice thing is that when the top sits on the bottom, the little hemispheres actually align the top to the bottom. And this basically acts as little mini case alignment pillars. Now, this keyboard doesn't really need alignment pillars considering that this entire assembly here and here, as well as all of this, is for alignment. So it pretty much fits in without having to think about it. It's not possible to not it's not 
possible to misalign this. It is incredibly, incredibly hard to misalign this. Uh, it is incredibly easy to assemble it incorrectly though. All right, back to the case top. We've got a ledge right here. So the bottommost ledge is meant for holding the plate in place. And if we look at the plate, we can see that the plate has little circles in it. Those circles go around the hemisphere and this full oval right here and rest upon this ledge right here, both on the top and the bottom. Uh, the secondary ledge is for uh, case assembly, and then there are no further ledges. Uh, in terms of the interior, uh, I can see what could potentially be a hook mark, but again, it's on the case interior. Uh, it's fully expected to see hook marks on a case interior. Though, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's a hook mark or just some uh, little factory little scuff. Again, not important. It's on the case interior. Every, every keyboard has got one or two of these. So, quite interesting. Uh, as we said, the plate has these uh, little ovals that are used for the mounting in conjunction with the O-ring, uh, also known as the gummy snake. So this here is the gummy snake. The gummy snake goes around the plate and PCB and sits in between them like any other gummy snake keyboard. However, you'll notice when we try to assemble it, the gummy snake has nowhere to go. So for this keyboard, the gummy snake actually gets pulled out by hand. Is my plate upside down? No, it's not, okay. The gummy snake gets pulled out by hand and pushed into these little grooves here. There we go. There we go. And one more. Sorry, with the gloves, it's incredibly hard to do this. There we go. So during assembly, you push it into the outside grooves. Now keep in mind this uh, this top ledge right here. So this ledge right here uh, connects to the case bottom and then via some small little nubs, those nubs will hold the gasket in place. This is generally a good thing for the mounting. You don't want a fully flush, AKA a sandwich type mount uh, for your O-ring as it has very little benefit. Uh, let me try and pull out the case bottom. So I am referring to these little nubs. So these little nubs will hold the gasket in place. Uh, this is referred to as a ledge mount gummy, uh, something like the, uh, I mean, there's a bunch of keyboards that do ledge mount gummy. This is not a full ledge, it's just nubs. Uh, but this is beneficial. If uh, instead of this nub, we were out all the way across, uh, the typing experience would be significantly stiffer. Now, I said before, assembly is kind of annoying. There's a couple of reasons for it. Uh, reason number one is if you apply any sort of weight to the case, that happens. The gasket will kind of sneak out of its spot, and then you got to put it back in. Now, keep in mind, it's, it's impossible to fully assemble the case with the gasket incorrectly like assembled. So if the gasket does slip, you cannot assemble the case. Like it simply doesn't work. You can't screw the uh, the circle into the other circle unless the gaskets are in their little areas right there. All right, so this can this gets a little bit annoying if you're trying to flip it over, you know, and and uh, here let me let me demonstrate. So it's possible that if you turn this over a little too hard, the plate will come out of place and the gaskets will snap out of place. Uh, this is more of a problematic issue with DHHKB uh, because there are no switches here and here. Uh, basically that makes the, uh, the gummy not as, uh, not as uh, stretched, which means there's a little bit more play on it. 
which which will make it pop out a little bit easier. Uh, I had some issues assembling it the first couple times, but after assembling it like three times, I got the hang of it. It's fairly simple. Uh, it might be you know it might be a pain first time around, but it's totally fine afterwards. Uh, the second issue I had during assembly was uh, the issue, obviously, with the JST using the foam. Uh, if you don't use the foam, you're pretty much not going to have an issue. However, if you are using the foam, you should probably cut off this uh, heat shrink right here. Uh, gets a little bit hard to assemble when you put the JST in, as your mobility is kind of limited. So let's plug this in. There we go. The issue is, as you put the case top onto the case bottom, so that's already something that requires two hands, especially considering the fact that this plate and PCB will jump out for no reason, is you also have to align this to fit in the cable gutter while doing your best to not scratch the top and bottom together. It's kind of, it's kind of, oh yeah, and I just unplugged the JST. It's a hard game to play, but once you've done it a few times, you can pretty much just nail it every time. And let's see, did we nail it? Yeah, we nailed it. Yeah, we're good. So that's the assembly. Uh, like I said, first couple times is kind of hard, but once you get used to it, it's totally fine. Okie dokie. So, in terms of uh, in terms of the mounting, now I I, I kind of understand why this mounting is done this way, considering uh, considering this is a screwless assembly. Uh, if this was a standard assembly, the ledge uh, ledge mount uh, gummy snake would be a lot simpler and wouldn't necessitate you having to pull these. The issue that I got when I spoke to a, uh, a good amount of K owners was that they expected it to be less stiff. And that is true. This is a stiff feeling 60% uh, board, uh, notably for being gasket, gasket mounted. Uh, a lot of people who bought this or the people that I have spoken to uh, have all had the same qualm, which is I expected it to be less stiff. Is stiff a bad thing? No, not at all. It just caught a lot of people by surprise. Uh, one way around this is obviously, instead of getting the aluminum full plate, we could have gotten a half plate or a polycarbonate plate, anything of the sort. Uh, in terms of the typing experience, like I said, that's something we'll cover with Paul later. For me, it's not an issue. I personally don't like it. I don't like stiff things. I prefer, you know, softer keyboards. My my general qualm with the uh, keyboard as a whole is that this could have been just as good if it was top mounted, in my opinion. It would have also been cheaper, but top mounted, it would have pretty much felt the same. Uh, apples to apples comparison, I had a bunch of people type on this and then type on my top mounted boards. This actually felt stiffer in a lot of cases. Uh, and that's comparing an aluminum plate to an aluminum plate. It is a very stiff feeling board, which again, if you don't have a problem with stiff, is not a bad thing. So let's pop this out. There we go. And let's talk about the plate and PCB. Alrighty. The plate is decently machined, obviously. Uh, everything thus far has been very, very well machined. The quality control has been top notch. The plate is no exception. So this is a plate that fits HHKB and standard 60%. Here we can see how the gasket doesn't necessarily go all the way around. Uh, one thing I would recommend is uh, if you have an HHKB version of this, uh, your life would be a little bit easier if you just grab a slightly smaller O-ring uh, that would sit a little bit more snug. It would help with assembly, notably, and uh, it would help with something else. If you know, you know. Anyway, uh, plate cutouts are clean. 
plate machining is super clean as a whole. Uh, it's got these little areas right here because that's where the feet are. So the top sits right here. So the top grabs the plate from here and also across here and also on these circles. So there's a decent amount of contact keeping the plate in place. One of the reasons why it feels stiff to a lot of people. Uh, we've got some nice old fashioned space bar cutouts, nothing fancy. We don't see any, uh, any acoustic cuts on the uh, tab caps, uh, enter or the, well, I guess this would be backspace on HHKB. So no meme cuts. The cuts are only what is absolutely necessary. That being the switches themselves and the OG spacebar cut. Now, there's a few reasons for uh, doing cuts like this in a spacebar. Uh, reason number one is acoustics. Some people don't like the sound, but the majority do like the sound. And the second thing is it allows a little bit more flex on this area of the plate. By reducing the material, you're making the plate as a whole more flexy in that area. And a uh, soft feeling space bar leads to a soft feeling typing experience as a whole due to just the psychology of how we type. Uh, if your space bar is loud, you'll think your keyboard sounds loud. If your space bar is mushy, you'll think the whole keyboard feels mushy. It's, it's, it's a little trick that our brains play on us where the space bar will kind of direct you one way or the other about how you feel about a board. Plate, solid. Uh, I personally don't like the full aluminum uh, plate. It's a little too stiff. Uh, the aluminum half plate, I like it. The polycarbonate plate would have been fantastic, I assume. Uh, I haven't tried it, though a lot of people tell me it is quite nice. Now, keep in mind that when dealing with gasket mounts, there are two main things that everyone needs to understand. There is flex and there is bounce. A gasket is not flexy, okay? A gasket is bouncy. What is flex? Flex is when you press down in the center, right? And the center goes down without the top and bottom moving down. That is flex, AKA flexible, right? Uh, let me show you with styrofoam, all right? So flex is when I, when I am mounted in the top and bottom and when I press down, the middle will flex down. Simple. Bounce is something else. Bounce is as I type, the entire plate will go up and down. So generally that is what a gasket does. So this is bounce, this is flex, okay? Probably a terrible example, but hopefully you guys get the idea. Now, going to a half plate or going to a polycarbonate plate would give you flex. It would not give you bounce. Uh, there is a surprising lack of bounce in this keyboard, which is why a lot of people uh, say that it feels stiff. All right. Okie dokie. Let us take a look at the PCB. PCB is, it's an open and shut case. This is a Heine PCB. It's an H60. You can see right there. And it's got the little Monoke logo. Very cool. It's simple. It's got gold pads instead of silver pads. That's nice. The JST assembly is over here uh, near where the USB assembly would have been if this was a uh, non daughter board variant. Quite cool. Physical reset switch on the bottom. Not necessary since it comes uh, with via flash, but very nice to have. I like it. Uh, nice little controller right there. It's a very, very simple PCB. Uh, obviously, it's got your tray mount points here, 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 and here, and there. So this could technically be tray mounted. So I guess this was the footprint for Heine standard 60% and he ported it over to the K. Do I like it? Yes, fantastic PCB. It does all the things I need it to do. It has the ability for, uh, for LEDs. I don't know who uses LEDs, standard LEDs anymore, except for on caps lock and other indicators. However, it is a possibility. Uh, the footprint allows for both uh, Alps and MX. Cool. 
not really doesn't really matter but cool and uh, finally this also comes in a hot swap variant now uh, all of the PCBs that I have are solderable all three and uh, they're good they're good PCBs this has been desoldered and resoldered a couple times now maybe a little dirty fantastic fantastic PCB I couldn't have wanted a better PCB in this case So yeah, so that's the PCB, that's the plate, that's the case, that's the externals, that's the internals, that's all, all the good stuff. So now we are going to pop into a discussion with Paul, where we're going to say a lot of opinions. And keep in mind, it's very important, everyone is entitled to their opinions. And just because I say I don't like something, it doesn't mean that thing is bad. But we're going to say a lot of opinions. Uh, after that, we'll do a typing test, and then we'll go into the summary. I'll see you guys there. What's up, Paul? What's up? How are you doing on this uh, on this fine? What day is today? Saturday. This fine Saturday. Pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good. So I just finished shooting my uh, my K review, mm -hmm. and I went through it, and like I couldn't find much bad to say about it because I didn't use it. I uh, went through the unboxing experience. I went through uh, you know the aesthetics and everything. But you got a chance to really use it. Yeah, you gave it to me for five weeks, four or five weeks. Stock and like, even stock stabs and you knew what you were doing as well. Anyway, besides the point, I got to use the board for a good month with stock switches breaking in the switches for this and then a good week or so with it looped. Um, it's a nice board. It feels more like a, a top up than anything. Yeah. I mean, there's there's the three main points we want to hit on, mm -hmm. right? For any keyboard, mm -hmm. we've got aesthetics, we've got sound, and we've got feel. Now, all three are kind of subjective, but like as, from an objective standpoint, the aesthetics are on point. Yeah, I agree. I, I I actually really like how simple the board is, even though it's got like like subtle sides to it and um, and. Uh, even the little engraving on the bottom, even the little visa on the inside. Mm -hmm. There's small things like that. It, you know, it, it makes for a, quite a cute board. Um, if we're talking about how the board feels in regards to its mounting, though, uh, 
it, 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 the, the O-ring inside of it doesn't really feel like it, it's doing much to it. It might give it a more consistent sound throughout the board, um, being the way it's compressed throughout, uh, around inside of the plate, but I don't really uh, feel any bounce or any feedback from the plate itself. No, I mean, yeah, I, I contradict your, your preferences in that I like a stiffer typing experience than, than you do. In general, yeah, and that's why I, I opt for brass plates in a lot, in a lot of my, as a preference. Um, so the, in terms of typing on this, it, it feels good to me, but it leaves something to be, desi to be uh, desired. Like, uh, I, I'd, be, I'd be happy with just the bottom mount keyboard. Yeah. And for me, bottom and top mount feels almost identical. So like, mm -hmm. uh, for, for me, that's where my, my, kind of my issue with this is it doesn't feel like, a, like an O-ring board. Yeah, I agree. I mean, my, my issues stem from that problem because the mount is unnecessary. The way that I look at it is the issues I have with this board is it's way stiffer than you would expect it to be, which is something I actually heard from multiple people while I was uh, reaching out uh, to pick up a replacement unit for reasons. But uh, I, I spoke to a lot of owners and all of them, they didn't tell me, oh, it's stiff, therefore it's bad. They just told me, I didn't expect it to be this stiff. And some of them were like, I don't like it, which is totally fine. Stiff doesn't mean bad. I just personally don't like stiff. You're more of a stiff guy. Yeah. <laughs> but like the, the, the mounting has very little benefit in terms of anything. It, it doesn't help. It doesn't help. The way that I look at it is this could have been like, hypothetically, like $20 cheaper and be top mount. That puts it down from $430 to like $410. I believe it was full form. No, I, I checked recent, uh, I checked today. It depends on conversion rate, obviously. Okay. But the entry level is about 430 or 427 USD mm -hmm. as of today. And then the, uh, the high end was like a lot. It's like 800 bucks or 900, but it's got a uh, polished stainless steel bottom. But I mean, the way that I look at it is it could be 20 bucks cheaper. And then like the packaging as well. If you remove the packaging, that would be another 20 bucks cheaper. And now we're looking at like a $380 keyboard, which for sure, this would be great for 380 bucks. Sure. Uh, I got to unbox this with you and the unboxing experience is, you know, it's, it's nice. It's nothing really special, but they could have saved some money there. They could have given you a hard case. They could have done something like that. I, I liked the unboxing experience, but for me, I don't care. I, I, I don't care. For me, it's it's garbage. Well, the environment we live in, you know, uh, it'll be destroyed in three months. If we're storing a couple of boxes, uh, we're extremely prone to silverfish here. Yeah. So, I mean, that's specific to this area, but like I'm sure. A lot and of it's human. And it. it's human. Well, once like over time, your box, the humidity will get into your boxes. No matter how good your boxes are, they turn to mush. So you're giving me something that's going to become garbage down the line. I mean, in, like in terms of my opinion, it's already garbage. Like, what am I going to do with the box? Sure. Yeah. Um, there is the opinion that with a half plate, this board is a lot better. But my counter argument to this is, take any sixty percent and put a half plate in, and it's going to feel the same because it's like there isn't enough space, like a horizontal space, for you to really benefit from the, the half plate itself having some feedback. Yeah, so there's only so much flex you can get out of such a small plate. Right. So uh, like if you if you buy this board and if you if you're expecting bounce, get the half plate. Uh, if you want a really stiff typing experience, get the aluminum plate. That's that's just my two cents on this. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's no there's no bounce and there's no flex with, with the full plate. Uh, something I did off camera, and I tried to catch it on camera, by the way, people that are watching, but I, th the movement is so minute, I couldn't catch it on camera. But if you do put enough pressure on the plate, there's like one millimeter of movement. But when that's I, around the G and H. I'm not, no, 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 like, like here, like over here. 
I press super hard and you watch the absolute corner, sure. this is like this is like 15 or 20 pounds of force. It barely moves. So it, it, it does something. That something is you can't even see it on camera. I tried uh, I tried to capture it on the macro cam, but my hands moved more than the entire board. So like I couldn't show it on camera. Shame. Again, this is a preference thing. Like I'm playing I'm playing devil's advocate here. Just because it's stiff doesn't mean it's bad. Yes, and that's. I guess that's part of the reason why. Why I, 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 I like it when it's not moving too much. Just, just say the words. Just say I like it stiff. I like it stiff. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, I generally enjoyed it. it. Like it sounded better without foam in the board. Oh, you preferred it without the foam. I preferred it without. What was what was the difference? Because like I didn't like I've only typed on it with the foam because I gave it to you with the foam, okay. right? I mean, this makes sense from a physical perspective as well. It sounded a lot denser and a lot more full with the foam, but mm -hmm. uh, the, the board is constructed in such a way that it's, it's not necessarily high pitched and doesn't have that high pitch resonance when there's no foam uh, inside of it. So while there might not be too much clearance between the PCB and the, and the bottom of the case, um, it gives quite a nice uh, sonic feedback. I, I get what you mean. It opens it up, basically. Yeah. Yeah. It opens it up so you actually have sound going on mm -hmm. inside your case. I think, uh, I also think like Milky Cat's <laughs> all-time like budget-friendly switch, probably one of the better switches to use in this board. Okay. I, I don't think, uh, I know you, you don't like JWK, but I think avoid JWK in this if uh, if you've got any PC top variants such as alpacas, I think avoid that kind of stuff. Um, so I think like Cherry and Milky, simple switches would work well in a build with this. Now here's here, here's the thing. Sixty percent are really hard to get to sound good from a design perspective. It's really hard to make a good sounding sixty percent because of volume, right? Yeah. Now, in your in 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 your mind, I need you to like erase every brass plate board because brass is like easy mode. Sure. But 60 is super hard to get to sound good. I actually like the sound of this. Like, I, I don't like typing on it personally, but it sounds good. For me, it, it covers two out of the three tri uh, sides of the triangle. It covers aesthetics and it covers sound. Mm -hmm. Feel could be fixed with a half plate, but again, like it's, it's the nagging thought in the back of my mind that's just like, you got a gasket, but don't need a gasket. Like I said, if you have a half plate, on this size, on, in this form factor, every sixty is going to be the same. It's it's gonna it's gonna flex where there's no plate, and then it's not going to bounce where the gasket is. And that's the point of having that type of mounting is that is to give some sort of feedback through the plate itself rather than just through a PCB bending. Yeah, yeah, that's well phrased. How do you feel about the HG size? Does that do anything for you? It's. I like subtle, subtle um, nuances with the board. I like it. Yeah, and um, it's 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 a pain to pick up. Yeah, uh, you. How is it? How is it a pain to pick up? Uh, from the sides, like uh, ah. I, I got sweaty hands. Yeah, yeah. If we I always grab it like this. Okay, uh, so one I'm always from the side. Thanks. Um, sweaty hands, broken hands. Uh, <laughs> like you just, it just slips like that. <laughs> nah, I'm being nitpicky. Don't worry about it. Um, I, I like how it looks. I, I genuinely like how it looks. A lot of people prefer kind of like an instep near the bottom of the case, but okay. I'm like I'm one of those people. The first sixty is fine because the sixty you can you can grab top and bottom. You don't grab sides. Yeah. Unless you have like really small hands. In which case you can still pick it up. It's just yeah, you can. I'm just being I'm just being nitpicky. The HG sides don't do much for me. They do. They do a lot for a lot of people. Yeah, a lot of people really, really like it. And if you like HG sides, this is like a fantastic board. Like, we've we, we've gone through like the whole you know walkthrough of the case exterior and interior. From from an aesthetics perspective, this is a great keyboard. From a sound perspective, this is a great keyboard. From a feel perspective, I don't like it. But if you like stiff boards, this is a great keyboard. Yeah, I'll uh, I will take one and, and say that's me for sure. And then. Like the, the, the only thing left, like my only qualm with it was the price point, which was a little high. 
but like, I don't think it's overpriced. Given given today's, I don't know. I forget about for, forget about that because like it's become such a low bar. Mm. It's become such a low bar. Everybody's super overpriced, but like for for what you get, you get a great unboxing experience. There's a lot of a lot of good stuff in that box. That box probably costs more than a hard case would have cost. I know for a fact it costs more than a hard case would cost because I know what hard cases cost for this, like approximately this size. Mm-hmm. So that's like you know not thirty dollars off for twenty whatever twenty to thirty dollars depending on the the uh, MOQ. And then, like, is this worth four hundred dollars? Keep in mind this has no brass in it; it's all aluminum. I I'm okay with it, but again the nagging thing, which is this could have been cheaper if it was top mount Simon. The little nagging Simon in the back of my head. Just the mounting mechanism and the machining to get to get that in place. You know, if you made it top mount, it would be simple. It would be cheaper to manufacture. But I can't really say that it's extortionate for what it is. I think it's I think it's decently priced for what it is. I think it's okay. I think it's okay priced for what it is. Yeah. Keep in mind, you're you're getting an amazing level of quality control. That like is... now I've seen two units mm-hmm. and they're both fantastic. One thing to note though is the aluminum is very soft. This is obviously a choice based off of you know uh, how they wanted to do the machining and the finishing. But the aluminum is rather soft. I've seen people complain about it. So be careful if you're dinging it or banging it or scratch. throwing it. Even a scratch might. Oh yeah, I, I managed to scratch the interior with the tip of my uh, ceramic tip tweezers without applying much force. They're pretty blunt. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So like, okay. uh, not this unit, the other unit, but like, yeah. I, I just like barely touched it and I was able to, I mean, to be fair, a lot of keyboards have soft aluminum. Sure. You know, and the soft aluminum helps bring out specific colors when it comes to anodization. Is this a CCC3, right? Is it? Or would it be something like 50, 54? I couldn't find any information, so like, I don't want to go out and assume, but this is really soft. This is really, really soft. I, I like how the anodization feels on it though. Yeah. Compared to like other boards, so it, I, yeah, I just, I, just I, like, I like how it feels. I, I don't know if that's to do with how it was finished or the actual grade of aluminum that was used, but it feels nice as well. Yeah. So what do you think, Paul? Is this a good keyboard or a bad keyboard? I think it's a good keyboard that leaves something to be desired. Um, on a scale of like one to ten, I'd give it like a, in my eyes, a six and a half, seven. Really? Like that. I'm, I'm being quite critical because of you, the mount. And you typed on it for five weeks? Well, yes, there's that. I used it with stock switches. But in, in terms of sound, I'd give this like an, an eight or a nine. Aesthetics. I agree. Like Aesthetics, it, I'll give it a 10. I'll give it a top grade. For what it is, yeah. yeah. And for feel, for me personally, I, yeah, I, know, I think a six and a half is a bit harsh. Uh, for feel, for me, I'd give this like a seven and a half. Yeah, like overall, I'd give this keyboard like an eight out of 10. And it could have been 10 out of 10 if, honestly, if it was top mounted and like 50 bucks cheaper. I'd, this would like be the best key, the best 60% period. Whereas my number one 60% currently is probably the unicorn because it's cheap, it's gasket, and proper gasket, which it, oh boy, that gasket definitely does something, mm. and it's cheap, even though that was point one. I will say this makes me want to try more 60% stuff, or get used to that form factor. I, not that I was like, I mean, yeah, I was like forced to use this layout, uh, but uh, some, there's something about this board that kind of caught my attention. <clears throat> And it's like, yeah, try it, try, try out some more 60s. Let's see, see how it goes. It is a decent 60. I, I'm not a big fan of 60s. It's it, it's not really a big secret. I can't really use 60% in my day to day use because I need uh, main layer arrow keys, main layer nav. And also, I have what we call in the business stupid fingers. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I generally I still prefer 65 yeah. over this. And um, like, I think your favorite is TKL. FRL. Oh, okay, FRL. FRL, TKL, WKL, 
IRL, BRB. Fair enough. My, my, my priority should be like 65 and then a TKL. Yeah, before this. But I don't know. Like, something sweet about it has, has caught my attention. Okay. I mean, that was pretty much our summary. I was planning to like cut and then do our actual summaries. Is this our summary? Do you want to summarize, Paul? You do your summary, then I do my summary. Buy this for four hundred and thirty dollars, and not Mac Market eight hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's no secret that I, I threw a K. To be fair, I threw a lot of keyboards. I'm not saying it's okay, but I damaged it, and so I had to get a replacement, and that replacement was eight hundred dollars. So I spent. I spent like a month uh, critiquing how expensive this keyboard is and ended up having to pay double its price. Some people call that karmic justice. I call that something else. <laughs> no, I think, uh, I think if you were to buy this uh, at its group by price right now, I, I'd be pretty happy with that, to be honest. Okay. As long as you got along with a hard plate. Yeah. yeah. Strong, strong agree. Unless you really, really, really like stiff mounting, then oh baby, go go for that aluminum plate. It is stiff. It's up there. It's not like as high as the uh, the, the aluminum Jaguar. So that's a thick like J1 with like twelve mounting points plate. Mm. But compared to every other top mount that I had in aluminum, this was actually stiffer. Which was actually, hilarious. Uh, in terms of like feel and and, and whatnot, uh, the the board we we had on stream the other evening with a brass plate. Oh, the newbie. Right? Well, uh, keep in mind, that was leaf spring. It, yes, it's leaf spring. But you can still feel, you, you still have a lot more feedback from a top mounted leaf spring than you do a gasket, and that's like... Yeah. It's a little bit confusing. Was that your summary? My summary was that buy for 400, not for 800. <laughs> That's a good summary. That's a good summary. Like, uh, buy for 400 with a hard play. Like, that. That's a good summary. All right. My summary, I mean, like I've already said, like, I'll give this a solid 8 out of 10. Only because I personally don't like the feel. I think aesthetically, it's fantastic. I think the unboxing experience is amazing, even though I don't care for the unboxing experience. And I think the sound is, it's, up there. The sound is up there. It's one of the best sounding 60s. I love how this sounds. I love how this looks. I like how it feels. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've got a half plate now. So keep that in mind. So I said at the beginning of this review that I have opinions and I would review this as unbiased as possible. And it is a good keyboard. I just don't like it personally. Because I don't like the layout, I don't like 60%, I don't like stiff mounts, and I don't like paying, you know, extra for an unboxing experience. And that's pretty much it. Like, if, if you like, you know, the stiffer feeling 60% and love an unboxing experience, boy, is this the keyboard for you? 100% agree. It is, like, objectively, it is a really, really good keyboard. Yeah. Like, surprisingly good. Like, the more time you spend with it, the more you realize how decent it is. I, I, I was telling you, like, even though it was with stock switches, that over time I was start, it was starting to grow on me. Well, that's mental breaking. That's sure. something else. But at first I hated it. And by the time I'd given it back to you, I was like, I can appreciate it for what it is. Fair enough. All right, we gotta do the thumbnail now. We gotta do the thumbnail. So we gotta, we gotta like do the keyboard and make a face like you're a big twat. <laughs> Wait, okay. Not black. No, <laughs> you gotta you gotta make the face. What's the what's the what's the? Uh... Okay. All right, go. All right, that's perfect. God, I hope that turns out decent. <laughs> oh god. Anyway, that's that's the review for the K. <laughs> if, if. Sorry. 
Well, it's no. Go ahead. I was going to say, do a freeze frame. <laughs> oh, God, no. <laughs> anyway, that's the review of the K. The K is a solid 60% that I'm not a, a huge fan of, but you should be. Uh, if you like this video, give me a thumb. And if you dislike this video, also give me a thumb. Ah. Yeah. And if you like keyboard content, then drop us up. I'll see you guys on the next one.